Thank you and welcome this evening uh, for the invocation. We're going to invite Shannon Boxwell forward and for the pledge, Hannah Rays. Please come forward. And if you would please rise for the invocation and the pledge. Shannon. Dear Lord, please bless all the graduates that are here today, bless their families, and let them go on to succeed great things. In Jesus' name, amen. Oops. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Good evening and welcome to the 24th GED annual convention, uh, graduation ceremonies, commencement ceremonies. We're so pleased to have you here. We congratulate you and your graduate. What a wonderful night. Uh, first, we have some introductions to make because this is so important. We have a lot of important people, dignitaries here. You know, the school board is your elected leader from your district in the, in the parish to uh, go and meet with the other members of the school board to make policy decisions about how they want this school district to operate. And uh, they do a very good job for you for very little pay, really. And I'd like to introduce the president of the St. Tammany Parish School Board, Mr. John Lamarck. And two other members that were able to be here with us tonight, Ronald Betancourt from District 10, and Elizabeth Heinz from District 2. And as I said, they set policy and they make those kind of decisions that lead us as the, the goals for the parish. But uh, they also, one of the most important things they do, and they did it very well, they hire the leader of the school system. Uh, and we are so pleased they've hired an excellent educator, administrator, and fantastic leader, our superintendent, Ms. Gail Sloan. She does have help. Uh, Mr. Trey Foltz, who couldn't be with us tonight, is the deputy superintendent. Ms. Cheryl Ellerby is the assistant superintendent of instruction. And Mr. Pete Jabia is the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. He's responsible for hiring all those excellent teachers and, and paras and all the people that work in our system along with all our principals. Uh, we are so blessed in this parish to have such great leaders. We're excited to be a part of it too. The adult education program is there as a ch second chance for those who were not able to finish school uh, on the regular schedule that many students do. Um, we're excited because it is not only a second chance, but boy, they come back and they work so hard and they're sometimes very afraid and, and lives uh, that are so busy, it takes a real uh, trooper to be able to do this uh, after you've left school and been out in the, in the world for a while. Uh, to help them do this, we have a great staff. I'd like to ask them all to stand right here on the front row I'm not going to name them all. Go ahead and stand. Let's give them a hand. They're listed on the back. There's one special lady. Uh, Bonnie, stand up for just a minute. Every, everybody deals with at least one teacher, but everybody deals with Bonnie. She's Miss Adult Ed. She's the Adult Ed Secretary. Uh, and then we have one other special person, uh, Mr. Eric Nye. Eric, stand up. Uh, everybody else you saw there, we're all paid employees. He's a volunteer. And he works as hard and sometimes as long as all of us do too. So we're really appreciative of what you do, Eric. And I know those graduates that he has worked with are appreciative too. Um, the most exciting part about what we do besides hand out the diplomas is uh, listen to some of our graduates and their stories, their success stories. Um, you see on the program. Let me direct you to Mr. Claude A. Gilliatt. Um, you see all those letters after his name? That's Master of Divinity and a licensed professional counselor. 
and a GED graduate. So he's got quite a story to tell because he's come a long way. He's a professional counselor, a marriage and ther uh, family therapist, uh, practices in the area, been very active, and he's very supportive of our program and comes always with an excellent testimony. So let us welcome Claude Gilliatt, please. Thank you. I have three goals this evening. Number one would be to share with you my story because I am one of you. And I like the way you said second chance. Doesn't mean second class or anything less. We have earned our diplomas, haven't we? So I'd like to share with you my story. I love hearing your stories. The uh, goal of sharing my story with you would be to hopefully inspire you. And in these days, we can certainly use a little inspiration if you hear the news. Uh, the third thing I'd like to do is be brief and let you get your diplomas. Number one, my story. Um, if you read the news, pick up a newspaper, a magazine today, if you turn on the television, if you listen to the radio, it's easy to tell that we live in very uncertain times. So you might think, great, I finished my uh, high school equivalency diploma, I'm going to go out there and get a job, and there are no jobs. Well, that's not entirely true. We were in the midst of a rather unpopular war, our nation is. The uh, times seemed very turbulent in lots of ways. When I was your age, it wasn't very different. <clears throat> in 1973, the country was embroiled in a very unpopular war. Um, the economy was not exactly thriving. Uh, the establishment, the government, we didn't trust, not if I was your age, and uh, you weren't going to live past 30 anyway, so when Timothy Leary said, tune in, turn on, and drop out, I did. I thought that's what you were supposed to do. And then I took a job at a local automobile dealership, it was a great job, and uh, nothing wrong with working at an automobile dealership. I've had friends who have worked their way through the ranks and turned some wrenches, moved up to parts managers, service managers, service writers, uh, and, and continuing to repair uh, automobiles. They make good livings for themselves and their families, grateful for what they do. But I got in there and I was not a fit. That was not for me. I, I couldn't uh, fit in there. I was hanging out and having a good time and decided, man, I've got to do something different. Now, the whole time, my mother was after me to go back to school and complete that uh, GED, but she'd never completed hers. And so to inspire me, my mother went back to school with me. And together, we earned our GEDs. Uh, and I'm grateful to her forever for having done that and inspired me. From there, I went to Nickel State University, better known as Harvard on the Bayou. I was not a stellar student in college. I hadn't exactly been in high school, so uh, college wasn't uh, a big jump for there. But I, I got to working hard and then discovered something that I enjoyed and really wanted to do, and that made a huge difference in terms of my studies. I took a course in television production and decided, wow, this is it. This is what I want to do. And transferred to another school, Spring Hill College in Mobile, Alabama, where I actually worked in radio and television for a number of years and completed my degree in television there. Uh, enjoyed working in television, but after a few years, thought that maybe there's something more. It's that school thing. I needed to go back to school again. Had a very profound experience uh, spiritually, went to New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary where I earned my uh, master's degree in psychology and counseling. It's a master of divinity. I specialized in marriage and family uh, studies there. I, and by the way, that's the cliff notes. I didn't bother telling you all the fun stuff I did along the way because I don't want to bore you with all that. But um, I did uh, work in the oil and gas industry, um, drilled a couple of wildcat wells in northern Alabama. In fact, DJ to nightclubs, modeled, modeled in television commercials for Izod, Levi's, and London Fog, did lots of other crazy stuff. M on my way to, to finding what I wanted to do, 
I have now been a licensed professional counselor practicing in St. Timothy Parish for 20 years. <clears throat> Which brings me to the inspiration part. You've completed this, the uh, requirements for your GED. I hope that this is a springboard for you to consider pursuing uh, other uh, opportunities to develop your skills and talents to do what it is that you want to do, whatever that is. Some of you will go to cosmetology school. Some of you will continue your studies in computers. Some will study in um, and go on to college, some will join the service. There are lots of opportunities out there. Don't be dismayed by the national news that the opportunity is not out there. If you live in our part of the world, there are lots of jobs, and I can give you some websites if you need them where you can find lots of opportunity out there. You worked hard to get your diploma, and you, I trust and hope that you will, in fact, work just as hard to accomplish getting the career that you want. And let me say this about pursuing a career, this is important, that um, don't let money be the deciding factor for you. We all have to make a living and want to earn a decent income, but if you're doing a job in which you're absolutely miserable every day, it's tough to pay you enough money. Well, I could think of a couple maybe, but really it's hard to make enough money if you're miserable the whole time. And finally, I want to leave you with this thought. Uh, in these days when it's all doom and gloom. Someone a lot brighter than me said that when we begin to fret and worry, we should consider the lilies of the fields. They neither toil nor do they uh, sew or spin or make garments for themselves, and yet Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. How much more then? Uh, are we cared for and will we accomplish our goals if we'll have a little faith? God bless and keep you, wishing you all the best. Thank you. What I hope you got from that is you can go as far as you dream. Don't give up, don't stop. This has been a goal for you. Now you've accomplished it and you can go further. About a year ago, a young man called on the phone to get a copy of his diploma for uh, some employment he was looking for. Uh, we talked a little bit, and he had a just interesting, fascinating story. And uh, I said, would you, would you uh, be interested in speaking at our graduation? And he uh, quickly agreed because he's been in that same boat you are now. He's taken a few left turns in life but uh, through determination and setting goals, he's turned his life around and uh, has an, a, a, a wonderful story to tell you. Uh, I want to present to you Mr. Harold Collins. Good evening. Um, first of all, I'm hoping I can make it through here without Ms. Sloan recognizing me. Um, she was a principal of mine, but don't tell nobody. <laughs> Um, my name is Harold Collins. I am a network administrator. I'm Microsoft certified and a whole bunch of other certifications that don't really matter. Um, it's you guys that are important and, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and I hope you know you can take where I was and, and, and use it. Um, in 1996, I was 18, about three weeks after my 18th birthday, and I went to prison and that's where I spent the next 10 years of my life. Um, just so happened, right before I went to prison, I went and got my GED. And unfortunately for me, and this sounds strange, unfortunately it wasn't that difficult. And the reason I say unfortunately is because it's the difficulty that really makes it worth something to you. And after I went to prison, you know, a whole lot of things happened to me. And, you know, I always had an interest in computers and, and you know, I just was blessed. I ended up in a facility in northern Louisiana. The sheriff needed computer help, and I would always study computers, and I ended up working for him and, uh, as a trustee. And you know, he, he basically paid for my education. And to help in that, I worked for the GED program in uh, Concordia Parish, and I developed a database for them to keep all of their information, and um, I went to school. I helped people get their GED. We helped people get their, take their ACT. and. Um, learned an appreciation for the GED and, and discovered that it was 
it, it had a meaning, it had a purpose, and, and you know, I hope all of you made a decision to get your GED. And I want you to know that that wasn't a mediocre decision, it's not a mediocre diploma, it, there's nothing mediocre about it. It was a decision that you made and you worked hard to achieve it. It's, it's something to look up to yourself for, and it's something to use later on to get yourself over the next hurdle. And there's several things that, you know, I would just encourage you to keep in mind. The first thing is principle, who you are, who you want to be. Always keep that in mind. Always work to become who you want to be. Know who you want to be and work to get there. And it takes work. And to demonstrate, I'll tell you a pretty um, lame story about a woman who was fascinated with a pianist. And... She went to every one of his concerts, and she watched them for years and years, and she was just fascinated with this pianist. And one day, she got a lucky break, and they let her go meet him. And she walked up to him, and she said, Sir, I would give anything in the world to be like you, to be able to play a piano like you play it. And he looked at her and smiled, and he said, No, you wouldn't. And she said, Yes, sir, I, I would. I would give anything, I anything to be able to play piano like that. And he said, No, you wouldn't. And she said, how can you say that? And he said, because I spent three hours a day for the last 10 years learning how to play this piano. If you spend three hours a day, every day for 10 years, you'll be able to play the piano just as good as me. But you're not willing to do it, or you'd be a piano player. So the, the point is, is if you love something, you have to work for it. You have to put in the effort, the sweat, the blood and the tears to be good at it. You put in the effort to get your GED, and in that, you've demonstrated that you have the ability to do whatever you want to do. And it's not a matter, you know, I, I had people tell me my whole life, well, you're just smart, you know. I went and got my GED, I didn't study very hard, you're just smart. You know, you're a genius, and it's not the case. You can do anything you want to if you put your mind and your heart to it. If that's what you work for, intelligence doesn't matter. And, you know, there are people that are smart and there's people that are not so smart and you may feel like you're one of the not so smart people, but I can assure you that you have a strength where somebody else doesn't. You know, in, in any case, find out what you want to be and be that. Don't be anything else but what you want to be. Don't let other people push you and manipulate you into being who they want you to be. Know who you are, know who you want to be and become that person. It's hard, it takes a lot of work, but you've already started, don't stop. Thank you, good words, words of experience. I'll tell you how smart these folks are. 1,150 people enrolled in GED this year. 250 of them got their diplomas. 47 of you cared enough to show up tonight. I think that's great. They not only sat through classes and studied and had to miss things in their life, maybe leave family early, leave work early sometimes, do different things that interfered with their life, but they studied. They sat through seven, almost seven and a half hours of testing on five different tests, and they did it. So that's a wonderful tribute, and congratulations again. You can do it. Don't stop now, this is only the beginning. We have a few more that, uh, these are the funnest parts. It's better than listening to dignitaries or anything, no offense folks, but uh, we like to hear from our graduates because we know you have worked hard to do this. I'd like to ask Brandy Andrews, Jennifer Seawright, uh, Andrea Sheehan, and Carmela, Cantalano uh, Rodi to come forward, please. This is Brandy. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brandy Andrews, and this is my story. It was early 2006 when I dropped out of high school and decided to get my GED. I remember I was so determined to get where I wanted in life. The first thing in my life on my list was to receive my GED. So I finally enrolled that following month and I was accepted. When I first started my adult education, it was a little rough for me. Honestly, I feel like I was slacking on my math education 
and I knew I would have to do whatever it would take to get my GED. It was hard to study as hard as I wanted to due to an abusive relationship and in a financial struggle from being only 17 and on my own with no steady job. I would have to admit that this point in my life where I ran out of hope and was ready to give up on everything altogether. I knew that every day I went to class, I was going to be one step closer to getting my GED. Miss Mary and Miss Maisha gave me the courage of finally finishing my GED. Somehow, deep inside, I did find hope and changed my attitude. Studied harder than I ever have, and before I knew it, I was being scheduled to take the big test. And of course, I passed because I'm here. So after two years of life's hard struggles, I finally earned my GED. I would like to give special, special thanks to Ms. Maisha, Ms. Mary, and my family since they helped me get where I am today. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, class of 2009. First and foremost, I would like to thank the administration who gave us this opportunity to be here today. Us graduating is our first stepping stone to our futures. I'd like to talk to the graduates sitting before me today and tell you my story. I dropped out of high school my freshman year. After a year or two of not being in school, I realized I was getting older and missing out on life. I didn't know what direction to go. One of my friends told me about this program and I am so thankful she did. If she wouldn't have, I wouldn't be standing before you tonight. I've gotten my GED, I've graduated from phlebotomy school, I work at St. Tammany Parish Hospital, and I'm currently enrolled at Delgado Community College for registered nursing. I stand before you tonight telling you this because these were my goals and I've accomplished each and every one of them. As I stand here, I look at each and every one of your faces and have no doubt in my mind you can set anything, your mind to anything you want to do. Someone once said, I know the process is so much stress, but it's the progress that feels the best. I would like to thank my family who stood by my side throughout this all. And I would also like all this, to thank all the staff at the Church of Christ, especially Mr. Cluster and Mrs. Owen, who believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself. Congratulations, class of 2009. We did it. Hi, my name is Andrea, and I would like to say a little about the GED program and the Workforce Investment Act, also known as WIA, and how they helped me and can help anyone out there who wants to get their GED and needs a little extra help. At the beginning of February, I started the GED school and also went to Ms. Maisha Harrell with the WIA program and asked her for help because I was having a hard time finding a job. Less than a week later, she got me a job working at the Y'all Saints thrift store. WIA is also a program that helps students find a job to get work experience. It's a 26-week program that helps you learn good work habits and how to act at a job. WIA is also, also helps you get into college and get a scholarship. It's a wonderful program that helped me a lot, and I believe it can help anyone out there looking for a little assistance. I was having some difficulty with math, but with help from Ms. Maisha Cushing, Ms. Gwen Paralu, Ms. Maisha Harrell, and my family, I got through math, completed school, and received my GED in April. Now I'm attending Delgado Community College for criminal justice, thanks to Ms. Maisha Harrell and her program. That's it. <laughs> and now Ms. Carmela. Hello, I'm Carmela Catalana Rodi. I'm standing here tonight with great pride and through determination to reach my goal and to fill a void I had all my life. From not learning what I could have because I quit high school. Being a parent, having a full-time job, I've always been knocked, something got in my way and I stopped. Then I'll go back for my GED again and then I'll stop again. And one morning I got a phone call and it was to hear that my only child got killed. So I, that was the ultimate, that was pushed me down. I didn't have no desire to do a GED again. So I woke up another morning and I got stronger and I said, well, no, Camilla, I can't quit. I have to be the strong lady. My, my son always told me I was. So. I picked up the phone and I 
found out where another GED school was, and I went to there, opened the door, and I found a man, Mr. Jim. I said, I'm here for a GED, with tears rolling down my face. And he said, what are you crying for? And I said, well, I'm embarrassed of my age, but I want, and I need my GED. I want to walk down, up that aisle with my cap and gown and earn my D diploma. He says, well, don't cry, don't be embarrassed. He says, you did the right thing by coming back for your GED, and it's never too late. So now I'm standing here tonight, and I could tell my son, Mama did it, and I'd like to thank all my family and friends from standing by me through the years to hear me say, I want to walk up that aisle with my cap and gown and get a, earn a diploma. And I would like to thank all my, Mr. Jim and all of my teachers that every day I had questions and questions, but they were right there to answer. So please, if I could let say to anyone out there that never completed their high school, please don't quit. Go get your GED and it's never too late. Thank you. That's it's just so wonderful. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen that are out there now, too. And you know, there's a common theme that runs through this that one, you can do it if you set your mind to it. The other is, though, you've heard each person pretty much refer to help they've gotten from others. As you become successful, don't, turn, don't forget to turn around and help somebody else along the way, as Harold has done. It took a lot to come up and stand here and tell you that he went to prison for 10 years. But he's corrected his mistakes, he's working, he's set goals, and he's succeeding in his life, and now he's back helping other GED students finish theirs. And his most important message is not, you know, two plus two or the things that he does academically, which are important. The main thing he does is to try and encourage them to continue. And that's just, uh, that's why we're all so excited about this class. This is so important that you've come back. You know, the, the uh, regular high school kids, they've got it uh, so well, and sometimes they don't know it, realize it, or appreciate it. They graduate like they're supposed to. And we have wonderful schools, we have wonderful graduations, but our superintendent and our administration and some board members love this ceremony because they know how much work you put into it and how much heart you have for it. So at this time, I'd like to invite our superintendent, Ms. Gail Sloan, up to give you a few comments about her belief in what you've done. I've been to seven high school graduations in about the last uh, week or so. None of them were any more special than this ceremony tonight. Dr. Cherry's right, as have been the speakers who have talked tonight. Harold especially said to you that when you have to stretch yourself, when it hurts a little bit to achieve something, it's much more meaningful. Um, and there are a lot of stories here tonight. You heard four of them, but the rest of you have your own stories. Some of you have encountered difficulties, faced challenges, had to work harder than perhaps you thought you would to get to this point tonight. So that victory is yours, you earned it. And I am so impressed, and hope you are too, that we have about 47 graduates here tonight and we have hundreds of family and friends who have been behind you all the way. Don't ever underestimate what that means to a person in life, because there are a lot of people that don't have anybody behind them. They have to do it on their own. It can be done on your own, but it's a lot better when you have people who love and support you. So be sure tonight you thank these people. In fact, if you would, give them some applause right now, graduates. I'm the only thing standing between you and your diploma, so I'm not going to talk long. want to, on behalf of the school board and administration, again, congratulate you. I do recognize Harold. have a couple of little embarrassing stories I could tell about elementary school on him. Uh, but we'll go ahead and give you your diplomas, and I'll hang around later afterwards and tell anybody who wants to hear about Harold's elementary school embarrassing stories. 
Uh, again, congratulations to all of you. I recognize some of you, too, who have come through our schools and classrooms and uh, even been had some of you in uh, the schools where I've worked. We are all very proud of you. Congratulations. Okay, now we've come to the time you've all waited for to get your diplomas. Uh, we're going to ask, the superintendent's going to hand them out. We're going to ask Mr. John Lamarck, president of the school board, to come up also. Uh, he wants to congratulate each of you. And uh, as I call your name, you come right up on stage, receive your diploma. First is Miss Lisa Abney. Elizabeth B. Alcott. William F. Alsbrook. Brandy M. Andrews. Robert L. Arno. Norris E. Baker. Jennifer A. Blatt. Ashton L. Behrens. Shannon L. Boxwell. Dylan W. Burke. Andrea N. Burnell. Crystal L. Calicoats. Charles Kuzan. Stephen B. Cruz. Chantel K. Dakin, Dakin, Justin D. Drum, Don S. Dupree, Whitney Dykes, Hannah H. Frazier, Brittany J. Freeman, Brian J. Gillum, James Troy Jackson, uh, James Tony Jackson, sorry. Michael A. Johnson. Al Alicia J. A. Jones. Uh, Kaylin Loft. Tiffany M. McDowell. Mason J. M Messina. Emma Marge E. Moody. Jacob J. Morris, Sierra L. Potter, Hannah F. Rains, Carmela Catalona Rodi, Brittany M. Sacco, Amy M. Selson, Jennifer C. Seawright. Jennifer Seawright. Daniel J. Seidler. Andrea N. Sheehan. Kyle J. Skull. Raven E. Stein. Amber N. Stockstill. Cody D. Sullivan. Stephanie M. Trimble. Jerome P. Watts. Darren R. Whedon. Joshua C. Whitmore. Christopher S. Williamson. And Patricia Wilson. That's great. Let's give them all a big applause. And now the superintendent, oops, and now the superintendent has one last important thing to say to you. Graduates, would you please stand? By the authority vested in me by the State Department of Education 
and the St. Tammany Parish School Board, I proclaim you to be graduates. You can throw your hats. All right. And we again congratulate you. We ask you to drive carefully tonight. There uh, is a place out, out in the lobby there where you can take pictures that has some balloons and things. And we will prepare for the recessional. <laughs>